for he will command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Psalm chapter 91, verses 11 through 12. Chapter 1 God help me, I can't lose him too. Nicole Kelly choked back an overwhelming panic and forced herself to stop running, to turn in a slow circle and scan the park. Jordan had to be here. She had seen him ten minutes earlier, and it wasn't like him to wander off. A thought slashed through her like a sharp prick of a knife. Had he wandered off? Or had someone... Jordan! Heads swiveled toward her. Nicole forced a tight smile, suddenly aware that the fear in her voice was causing concern on the faces of the other parents at the park. One young mother yanked on the hand of her toddler who had been playing beside her in the sandbox, pulling him onto her lap. He responded to the interruption of his digging with an indignant holler and struggled to free himself from the arms that had tightened around his waist. Nicole drew in a long, slow breath. Terrorizing young families wasn't going to help Jordan. Her imagination was running wild. From the moment her son was born, Nicole had struggled with the fear that someone would take him, likely because of what her husband had been involved in before his death. But that was in the past. What Gage had done couldn't touch them now. Could it? She forced herself to start walking in the direction she had last seen him, over by the swings. Beyond the playground area, a small hill rose up that she couldn't see over from her vantage point. Her son was likely there, in the grassy section that widened into an open field. Her six-year-old had always been fascinated by the people playing football and throwing frisbees to each other. He'd probably become so distracted that he had forgotten to check in with her. Nicole climbed the small slope on trembling legs and cleared the top holding the side of her hand to her forehead to block out the bright October sunshine. She let her eyes adjust. When they did, she could make out her son's orange jacket and Toronto Blue Jays baseball cap, and her chest clenched. He wasn't alone. A man was crouched in front of him on the walkway that wound around the edge of the field, his back to her. The two of them appeared to be deep in discussion. Anger rose in Nicole's chest, competing with the fear as she started down the hill toward them almost at a run, when she was close enough that she wouldn't have to scream, she called out, Jordan! The man in front of him rose and turned. Nicole stopped abruptly, the breath that had become ragged over the last few minutes suddenly catching in her throat. Daniel! A slow smile crossed his face as he lightly touched the back of her son and the two of them walked toward her. Nicole? For a few seconds, she couldn't speak. His dark hair was a little longer than she remembered and ruffled from the wind, but his eyes were as blue and piercing as she always pictured them whenever she thought of him. Judging from the jeans and long-sleeved navy t-shirt, he was off duty. Or maybe he wasn't even a cop anymore. It had been a long time since she'd seen him. A lot could have changed. Daniel contemplated her for a moment, then let out a small laugh and stepped around her son to reach out to her. Nicole hesitated before sliding her hand into his and letting the strength of the fingers that closed around hers draw out the last of her fear. He searched her face. You're shaking. You okay? Nicole pulled her hand away. She had no idea whether the trembling was a remnant of her fear over not knowing where her son was or from being in Daniel's presence again after so much time. I thought something might have happened to Jordan. She wrapped an arm around her son and pulled him to her side. He doesn't usually go off without me, so when I couldn't find him, I kind of panicked. Jordan kicked at a pile of leaves on the pathway. Sorry, Mom. It's okay. Now. I found him over by the skate park. He was pretty interested in what those kids were doing. I think you might have to invest in a board one of these days. Daniel grinned. A skateboard? <laughs> I'm still trying to get up the nerve to let him ride his bike on the sidewalk. I'm not quite ready for anything with wheels that actually leave the ground. She tilted her head. Did you know he was my son? Yeah. A sheepish look crossed Daniel's face. I've seen the two of you in the park a few times since I've been back. Back? The word clanged around a sudden emptiness in her chest. She hadn't seen him since the night she caught a glimpse of him standing outside the diner watching her. Still, for seven years the thought that he was close by had comforted her as she'd mourned the loss of her husband, given birth to Gage's son, and raised him on her own. The idea that Daniel hadn't been there after all left her feeling irrationally bereft. Yeah, I left town for a while. 
Where did you go? London. Her eyes widened. England? Daniel chuckled. <laughs> Not quite. London, Ontario. Couldn't be that far from my family. So only a couple of hours away. Somehow, that didn't feel much better. And what had he been about to say? What were you doing there? Two buddies of mine and I decided to try our hand at the private eye game. And? It went well, actually. The business took off. They're still at it. But a while ago, Toronto Police Services offered me my old detective job. And Charlene talked me into accepting. We're partners again. So you've been back for... Six months. And you haven't called. Nicole shook her head. Of course he hadn't called. Why would he? The last time they'd spoken, she'd broken his heart by choosing Gage over him. She was lucky he was even speaking to her now when they'd accidentally bumped into each other in the park. Or maybe not accidentally. So you've been watching us since you've been back? His cheeks colored slightly. I prefer looking out for you, but yeah, I guess I have off and on. How did you stay out of sight? He offered her an indignant look that was so clearly feigned she had to press her lips together to keep from laughing. Might I remind you that I am a professional detective? <laughs> I can blend into any surroundings so well that unless I choose to reveal myself, you would never know I was there. Clearly. So why haven't you talked to us before now? He sobered. I wanted to give you time. Her smile faded. Daniel... It's been almost seven years. Six years and ten months. Believe me, I know. The sadness in his voice tugged at Nicole's heart. Neither of them spoke for several seconds until she glanced at her watch. I should get Jordan home. He has a friend coming over in a few minutes. Okay if I walk with you? Nicole nodded. Sure. They headed in the direction of Nicole's condo at the far end of the park and across the street. Jordan pulled away from her grasp and ran ahead of them. Stop at the corner, Jord, Nicole called out after him. I will. She shook her head as her son veered off the path, chasing a squirrel until it disappeared up a tree, before making a wide running arc in the direction of the sidewalk, his arms out to the sides like an airplane. He's a great kid. Thanks. I think so. Nicole tore her eyes from Jordan and looked up at him. You really are a great detective. Except for the night I reopened the diner, I haven't seen you once. Well, I've seen you, and you're a great mother. Warmth flooded her chest. Thank you. That means a lot. So what made you finally show yourself? I saw Jordan alone, figured you'd be worried, so I thought I'd bring him to you. What made you think I'd be worried? Daniel looked down at her and smiled. Nicole stopped walking. He stopped, too, and turned to face her. I guess I don't usually let him get too far away, do I? Not from what I've seen. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. It's wise to be careful. But you think I'm too careful. I didn't say that. Daniel lifted both hands in the air. I'm not a parent. I'm not about to give advice. I can imagine there are lots of things for a mother to worry about, especially when she's raising her child... Alone? He sighed. <sighs> yeah. Nicole started walking again, and Daniel fell into step beside her. I know I can be overprotective. It's just that Jordan's all I have left of... Gage, I know. I really do understand that, Nicole, and it's okay for you to talk about him with me. The muscles across her shoulders relaxed. Are you happy to be back with police services? Sure. It's where I always wanted to be, working the superhero thing on a perpetual mission to rid the world of evil. Oh, yeah. I always think of you when I see the bat signal in the sky at night. Daniel laughed. <laughs> I wish. I'd love to have some of the toys he gets to play with. And the black cape is pretty cool. Nicole bit her lip. She hadn't realized until she saw him again how much she'd missed him. They came to the edge of the park. Jordan stood waiting for them on the corner. Well, I'm glad you finally came out of hiding. It's good to see you. Again, I prefer surreptitiously observing to hiding, but... Thank you. It's good to see you again, too. Up close, I mean, not from behind a bush or while peering around a corner wearing a disguise. Nicole giggled. <laughs> what kinds of disguises did you wear? Uh, you know, I like to keep it simple. 
Sometimes it was a mustache and thick glasses combination. Other days I'd wear my blonde wig and brown contacts. The best was the nun's habit, though. That was even better than my old police uniform to make everyone straighten up and behave themselves. Nicole burst out laughing. What's so funny, Mom? Jordan trotted over and stood at her side, looking back and forth between them. <laughs> Detective Gray was telling me about some of his undercover work. Jordan swung around to look at Daniel. Undercover work? That's cool. Do you have a gun? Jordan. Daniel smiled. That's okay. He crouched down in front of Jordan again. I do carry a gun when I'm working, but not when I'm off duty like I am now. Can I see it sometime? If it's okay with your mom. Maybe the two of you could come over for dinner one night and I can show you. Can we, Mom? With both of them looking at her expectantly, Nicole didn't have the heart to say no. Sure, George. Daniel pushed to his feet. How about Thursday? That would work. Tuesday and Thursday are my nights off from the diner. She looked at him and wrinkled her nose. Which I guess you already know. He shrugged. You do keep a pretty regular schedule. I have to. Between running the diner and being a single mom, it makes things easier if I know what's coming. I can see that. Of course, sometimes surprises are good. They keep life interesting. They do that. Nicole lost herself in the blue eyes that probed hers. An insistent tugging on her sleeve finally got her attention, and she looked down. Alex is coming. We have to go. Right. Okay. Nicole took a deep breath as she held out a hand toward her son. Mom, I'm six. I don't have to hold your hand anymore. I can cross with the lights. Nicole could feel Daniel's eyes on her. She exhaled loudly and dropped her arm. <sighs> okay, fine. But don't run. She watched him until he reached the other side of the street and jogged to Alex and his mother before she shifted her attention to Daniel. I guess I better go too. He nodded. See you Thursday? Six o'clock? I kept my apartment here, so... I'm at the same place. Her stomach twisted. The place she'd last seen him, where she'd kissed him goodbye. How would it feel to walk into his home again? Sounds good. She started for the crosswalk, then paused. Daniel? Yeah. Thanks for watching out for us. You're welcome. It's been fun. Kind of going to miss the skulking, actually. Nicole grinned, but as she crossed the street after her son, the grin faded and she pressed a hand to her abdomen. What had she done? Agreed to open up the Pandora's box she'd shut the lid firmly on a long time ago? Not very smart. Surprises were all well and good, but there was a fine line between life getting interesting and life spiraling out of control. The knife pricked her chest again. Her life had spiraled out of control seven years earlier, and someone she loved had died. Nicole's gaze sought out her son as he stood with his friend waiting for her. Chills passed over her skin like a raw autumn wind, and bumps rose on her arms. No matter what, she could never let that happen again. Chapter 2 Daniel hung up his jacket and sank into his desk chair. Gray? Charlene Roberts, his partner for three years before he'd gotten suspended from the force for the last five, stuck her head in the opening of his cubicle as he swung around to face her. I'm going for coffee. Do you want... She stepped inside the office and studied him. What's wrong? He forced a smile. Nothing. And sure, I'll take a coffee. Thanks. He started to turn away, but she stopped him with a firm hand on the back of his chair. Really? Still think you can fool me after all this time? When are you going to learn? Daniel dropped the smile. Never, I guess. So what is it? He hesitated, but knowing his partner wouldn't drop it until he gave her a satisfactory answer, he surrendered to the inevitable. I talked to her. Who? He gave her a few seconds. It took less than that for her dark eyes to widen. Nicole Kelly? Yes. Finally. <laughs> How did it go? Daniel ran his fingers through his hair and leaned against the back of the chair. Good. Great, I think. She and her son are coming for dinner Thursday night. Charlene let go of his chair and leaned back against his desk. Wow. So why do you look as though you made an appointment for a root canal instead of a date to see the woman 
you've been pining over for years. Shh! Daniel jumped to his feet and strode to the door of the cubicle, shooting a furtive glance up and down the empty hallway before dropping back into his seat. He lowered his voice, hoping she would do the same. I have not been pining. I've been giving her time and space to get over the death of her husband. Whatever you say. That still doesn't explain the worried look on your face. I always thought you'd be dancing around here like you'd won the lottery the day you finally worked up the nerve to connect with her again. Aren't you excited? Sure. Charlene let out a short laugh. <laughs> Looks like it. Come on, Gray, spill it. I don't have all day. To poke your nose in my business? You never put a time limit on that before. She shot him a dark look. Daniel held up both hands. Fine. It was good to see her again. Incredibly good. And I was happy she agreed to come over. At first. Charlene sighed and pulled the black plastic chair in the corner closer to him. This is going to take a while, isn't it? She sat down and crossed her legs, settling in. So, what changed your mind? I got to thinking about it. That's your problem right there, Gray. You do way too much thinking and way too little doing when it comes to this woman. Daniel toyed with the plastic tab on the lid of the empty takeout coffee cup he'd brought with him that morning. I don't know if you remember what I went through last time, Char, when she married Gage and I thought I'd lost her forever. She winced. I have a vague recollection. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't fun, either. It was the most painful thing I've ever experienced. I never thought I'd have another chance to be with her, and now that that's at least a slight possibility, I have to admit, I'm a little gun-shy. What if I put everything on the line and lose her again? <laughs> I seriously don't think I could handle that. Plus, she has a son now. She's a single mom. It's a whole different ballgame. That's true. Single mom isn't someone you trifle with. I have no intention of trifling with her, but I don't really know how I should proceed. Maybe it'd be better for us to stay friends. Can you be friends with her? He studied his partner. It was a fair question, and one he'd asked himself countless times over the last few years. The only way that would ever happen, that they actually could be friends, would be if he stepped out of the shadows he'd lingered in for far too long and let her know, like most rational people would, that he was there for her if and when she needed him. The problem was, when it came to Nicole, rational was not the word he'd used to describe the way he had... Gray? Charlene snapped her fingers in front of his face, then leaned back in the chair and crossed her arms. I guess that answers my question. He tossed the cup into the garbage can beside his desk. Mine too. You're right. <laughs> this is a really bad idea. I'm going to call her and cancel... He reached into his shirt pocket and pulled out his cell phone. Charlene covered his hand with hers. What do you mean I'm right? I didn't tell you to not see her. In fact, if you want my advice... Do I have a choice? <laughs> Why would you suddenly have a choice? You know getting my advice isn't optional. Taking it is, although do I need to remind you that whenever you don't, you regret it? You don't need to, but I'm sure you will. So listen to me this time. My advice is to see her. Why? Because if you don't, you'll always wonder what might have happened. You'll drive yourself crazy thinking about how great your life could have been if only you'd been able to man up and take a chance on being with a woman you've been in love with for years. And you'll end up moping around here feeling sorry for yourself, and I'll be the one who has to deal with that all day, every day. And if it all falls apart and I get my heart trampled again, you'll still be the one who has to deal with a fallout. Her expression softened. It's what I'm here for, Gray. I did it before and I can do it again. But there is a third option. You could take a chance with Nicole and it could all work out beautifully. She'll realize she's in love with you too and the three of you will live happily ever after. Isn't the remote possibility of that enough for you to be willing to put yourself out there? Daniel mulled that over. Maybe you're right. Maybe. <laughs> Have you ever known me to be wrong before? This would be a really bad time for your first. Then don't blow this. For either of us. I'll do my best. I'd really hate for my broken heart to do any damage to your ego. Charlene squeezed his hand and stood up. You still coming over Friday night for a barbecue? Tom's always happy to have another guy around the place. 
Well, if it makes Tom happy if I come over and help myself to a couple of free steaks, then sure, I guess I can do that for him. Always the giver. I need some time with my girls anyway. I could definitely use a distraction at the moment. Charlene's home had been his go-to place after Nicole had married Gage, and Daniel had gone through the darkest period of his life. In the years since, he'd fallen into the habit of eating with his partner and her family whenever he came back to Toronto to visit his dad and sister. He was more than happy to play uncle to their two daughters, their squealing laughter and innocent trust in him, gradually healing and soothing the cracked and broken pieces of his heart. Even now, struggling with anxious thoughts and scared to admit to himself how much he was looking forward to seeing Nicole again, the thought of going over there and spending time with all of them had him smiling as he went back to his work. I'll go get you that coffee. Charlene pushed the chair into the corner. He twisted to look at her over his shoulder. Thanks, Char. For everything. I'm doing my job, Gray. You're the cross I have to bear in life. Someone has to do it. Might as well be me. He chuckled as they repeated their well-worn mantra. Then he swung around and turned on his computer. As hard as she was on him and as crazy as she could make him by not letting him get away with keeping anything from her, ever, Daniel considered himself blessed every day to have Charlene as a partner. Still, he hoped and prayed for both their sakes that she had steered him right today.